Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Alright, so I've made this statement before that Democrats, and especially the top brass Democrats in positions of power, they tend to go with the flow, you know? Wherever the wind blows, they'll simply blow with it. In other words, they make decisions or they decide to take actions based on focus groups in the polls. The clear example that I reference every time to make this point is that it took Joe Biden over a hundred days to condemn the violence we saw back in 2020 during the George Floyd summer of riots. The violence probably would have stopped a whole lot earlier had Democrats condemned political violence, or in other words, terrorism, but it took them over a hundred days to do it. I remember it as clear as day. We spent over a hundred days covering the violence, condemning the violence, talking about how absurd it was, wondering when the Democrats were going to say something or do the right thing, but instead what did they do? They launched bail funds and fundraised off of it, and then only when it started to hurt them in the polls during the election season did they finally change their tone. Own. That's what these Democrats do. And so if you want to find out what the next play is going to be or what their strategy is, simply look at the polls. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so it's not the first time we've covered this topic. And actually, in a way, the new numbers that just dropped are kind of worse for Democrats. Here's a poll that was just conducted by Harvard Harris. Donald Trump boasts a plus six lead over Joe Biden at 53% to 47%. This is nationally, by the way, with registered voters. In other words, a nightmare scenario for the Democrats and likely to lead to a massive electoral landslide. Joe Biden is pretty much losing across the board except for when you ask one question. Well, they ask three questions, but we're going to boil it down to one in the end here. If Donald Trump is convicted by a jury of crimes related to his handling of classified presidential documents, who would you vote for for president? So basically, if Trump is found guilty of stealing classified documents, keeping the nukes next to his bed on his nightstand, it wouldn't move the needle at all and support stays basically identical. Then if Donald Trump is convicted by a jury for a RICO and trying to influence the 2020 election results in Georgia, who would you vote for president? It moves the needle a little bit, but not enough. And this is actually pretty big, considering this was the big case. I mean, this is the thing you heard Bill Maher and David Pakman and, you know, the rest of these guys going on and on about. Ooh, the fake elector scheme, the fake elector scheme. We kept hearing nonstop about this supposed supposed massive horrible scheme, well it seems as though that story hasn't exactly worked in the Democrat favor. It moves the needle a little bit, but not much, and actually the last poll that we covered showed a wildly different result that Donald Trump was getting trounced by Joe Biden if found guilty in Georgia, well that number has completely changed as people see that case as less and less legitimate as time goes on. And then there's the final question, if Donald Trump is convicted by a jury for inciting the Capitol riots of January 6th, who would you vote for? Then all of a sudden Joe Biden takes over and gets a lead. And so that's where you start to see the clear picture. That right there represents the Democrat strategy. That right there is exactly what the DNC is looking at. That's what Joe Biden is looking at. Make no mistake, I mean, let's be very clear here. We know what's going on. The Biden administration, the DNC, uniparty deep state is behind these convictions, or rather these indictments. And so obviously there's some sort of political calculus here. I wouldn't be surprised if moving forward we see the Democrats go all in on Jack Smith's January 6th case. It's the only one that they're fighting tooth and nail to keep the current scheduled trial date for. That case happens to be going to trial on March 4th, right before Super Tuesday. And we have seen an un a relenting effort from Jack Smith and all of his cronies and every really every legal arm of the Democrat Party. In other words, the entire Department of Justice, even recently Merrick Garland, taking to the media to interject himself, making the argument that a speedy trial and an early trial date here is justified. The department has policies about steering clear of elections. Um, is there a date in your mind where it might be too late to bring these trials to fruition uh, again to stay out of out of the way of the elections and uh, as the department policies well I'd, I'd just say you know what I said which is that the cases were brought last year prosecutor has urged speedy trials uh, uh, with which I agree um, and this is now in the hands of the judicial system, not in our hands. And so I guess the point that I'm trying to get to is that this tells you everything that you need to know. This is what they are going to try to do. Joe Biden has tried everything else. He's tried Bidenomics. I'm the greatest economic president since pretty much ever. He's tried the whole wisdom and foreign policy genius, the whole dark Brandon meme. Don't mess with Joe Biden. He may be old, but his age, of course, it's not a downfall. It's a benefit. There's no one with as much experience as Joe Biden, they tell you. What, what, what?
not exactly working. They've tried everything under the sun, everything you could possibly imagine to actually run a normal campaign. It just isn't working. It isn't in the cards for them. And so the last ditch effort, you know, what they're going to revolve their entire campaign around, I think, is really the legal efforts. They want to take Donald Trump down by taking him down in the courts, by stacking the deck against him. A leftist judge, a leftist prosecutor, a leftist stacked DC jury, and a rushed trial. That is what they're trying to do. Because that's their only hope. I mean, Joe Biden is losing everywhere. Trump's favorability rating, just released by this same Harris X poll, has him at a tie at 48 to 48. Joe Biden's headed towards the 30s. Trump is leading pretty much everywhere. I mean, just look at the polling averages. He's up two points across the board. It's red as far as the eye can see. A couple Biden leads, but they're basically statistical ties, and they're also anomalies or outliers. For some of the most leftist pollsters you could imagine in the Quinnipiac poll here, is I'd argue a little bit outdated at this point. That poll was conducted in late December. Well, now all of a sudden, Donald Trump is no longer the possible nominee of the Republican Party. He is the nominee. He's getting endorsements from Vivek, from Ron DeSantis. Nikki Haley eventually is going to endorse him as well. And so that's creating a little bit of a bump here that we're starting to see. And so, of course, the more this happens, the more desperate the Democrat guard is going to become. And they're going to rely almost solely on the Trump indictments as their political platform or political messaging campaign. In other words, they don't have a freaking political messaging campaign. Watch the desperation, watch the desperate acts tick up as Donald Trump continues to tick up. And speaking of ticking up, let's not forget the initial Harris poll findings. Trump is above 50% in national polling. In other words, he could possibly win the popular vote. Possibly. It's unlikely just because of the population size of New York and California, but it is possible. I mean, he's got a huge lead. And actually, speaking of places like New York, Joe Biden is looking at dismal there as well. The most recent Siena College poll has Biden leading by a measly nine points. That is pathetic for a Democrat in New York. I mean, absolutely abysmal. Joe Biden should be up by minimum 18 to 20 points. He's up by nine. He's struggling even in Democrat strongholds. Then, of course, let's add insult to injury. The most recent morning consult poll shows Donald Trump leading at 45 to 40 percent. Trump has a huge lead with independence. And this is the morning consult. Historically, they've underestimated Donald Trump, it's actually very rare to see Trump in the lead in general in a morning consult poll. Well, this time, this is his largest lead by morning consult since tracking began in December of 2022. So obviously, something is starting to cook up here. Democrats are panicking. They're going to be relying specifically on the January 6th case, which might not even continue depending on what the Supreme Court decides here. They're going to be possibly deliberating in the next month or two, reaching a verdict as to whether or not Donald Trump has presidential immunity in this case. And that's another element that might backfire in terms of the evil Democrat plan right now. As we see again in the polls from the same poll, the question was asked of those surveyed, do you think that Trump should have immunity from January 6th? 51% of respondents, a plus two lead, believe that Donald Trump should have immunity. That's not asking, do you think Donald Trump is guilty of inciting an insurrection or participating in an insurrection? That's simply asking, do you think Trump has immunity? The majority of the American electorate believes that he should have immunity. And so if he's not granted immunity, again, it creates more of that element or it builds up that element of martyrdom that seems to be so important to Donald Trump's, let's say, current political ethos. And so, like I've been saying, Democrats have attempted plan A, B, C, and D. Well, I guess plan E now is going back to plan A, or maybe back to plan B, and really diving into this whole January 6th thing. I think the media is going to start diving into that head-on, non-stop January 6th this, January 6th that. If the trial date remains, I mean, it's literally all we're going to hear about. Democrats are banking on that trial to make Donald Trump look so bad, and if convicted, I mean, Joe Biden gets an easy access to victory back to the White House. But you know, things tend to change with time. This could be the current outlook now. I don't know if it's going to stay like that. It's possible that it once again backfires depending on how Democrats play it. And I'm saying that because, well, it has been. The last poll we covered asking these exact questions showed Joe Biden leading by plus eight to plus 10 across the board if any conviction happened. Now the Georgia case, the documents case not moving the needle, Trump still wins. And the January 6th case, of course, moving the needle slightly. Moving forward, that might change significantly. And so I guess we'll just have to see if the Democrats' evil plans end up leading to the results that they're expecting. I'm not so sure. Let's see what they do as their backs are now against the wall. Anyways, that's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.